My name is Dev Randhawa. I'm Chairman and CEO of Fission Uranium. We are focused on developing an advanced exploration project in northern Saskatchewan, which is called the Athabasca Basin. It's a very high-grade uranium exploration project. What I think is the best jurisdiction in the world, Canada and Saskatchewan, where they've had 60 years of uranium experience. What makes our project very different than anything else in the world, sets it apart, is that the uranium high grade starts right at 50 meters, not 500, 50 meters. And that set, set, sets it apart from anything in the world. There are lots of deposits that are very close to the surface, like in Niger and Namibia, but they don't have the high grade jurisdiction advantages we have. Well, economics. Uh, you're, it won't cost as much having a trucking operation. That's number one. Number two, the Athabasca has a very huge and distorted history in, uh, with high-grade uranium down deep. Um, Cigar Lake was supposed to be in production in 2005. It finally went to production in 2015. It's a very unique part of the world where the grades are so high, but what caused them to get so high that still exists, which is water. So, class example is recently, uh, Chemical shut down a mine that they spent you know a, a billion on to get to this ore, and they shut it down because it was 600 meters down. And because the further you go down, the costs don't go up a little bit; they go exponential. So, what's what sets this project apart is that it's high grade, shallow, and, and for that, London School, London uh, Mines and Money. They awarded it as the best exploration project in the world. Not the best uranium, best silver, best gold, best ink. It's the best project, exploration project in the world. And that's why I won the award uh, in uh, December last year. We are right now continuing to do what's called baseline studies to move towards production. But we're also at making sure that we're not missing on the property another big these blobs of uranium aren't that big, and so you got to be very careful not to jump from area to area, and you're, you're trying to vector in, so we're still trying to expand. You know, we're at about two and a half kilometers now, we like to fill in if we can, but that's just a very small part of the property. There's a whole, you know, 98% of the property has been untouched, so we still like to explore more of the property, make sure you don't miss a great blob of uranium. Well, uh, it's very cold in the winter and uh, very dusty, as you know, in, in the summer. But Saskatchewan is very pro-mining. The Athabasca has had 60 years of uranium mining already, so it's not like NIMBY doesn't uh, work there, because people need the jobs and they understand. The infrastructures are there, the environmental uh, awareness and rules are there, the fisheries. Um, they've got a very clear system to make sure you're dealing with uh, respecting First Nations, environment, fisheries, very clear. Even before you start to drill, you have to tick all those boxes off. Awful. Uh, spot price is a 10-year low, and there's more reactors today being built than before even Fukushima. So demand of uranium is going to be very high in, in the next three to five, ten years. Problem is utilities are living off inventories. Now they've dropped, um, they're dropping about 35 million a year. I think the number came out today from Bank of Montreal was 75 million drop in inventories in 2012 and 2014. So if we extrapolate that out, you're probably looking at Another 120, another 50 million pounds have left. So as the inventories drop, they got to start thinking more. So while we're not seeing them active in the market, it's a very thin market. The spot price, and we tend to, we shouldn't be really talking about the spot price. We should be talking about long term. Most uranium trades on long term basis, not short term. Short term is something you set up when, you know, uh, something happens to one mine, they're not producing enough, and they need another, and they and they really borrow from each other. That was the original goal of the spot price, but now. It's where small uh, producers sell and they need the cash. So it's a very bad state right now, but I think if we were having the same conversation about gold last year, the same conversation, how bad gold is, it's the, never coming back, and all the doomsayers were saying it's going to 500. What do we have today? The same stocks that we talked about in there, like Barkerville, were trading at 20 cents. They've gone up three, 400 times. So same thing with uranium. I encourage investors to think contrarian where buy some of the good names. You know, I, I like Chemical, I like Denison, Next Gen, Us. I think these are the, the big brand names that have got well-established assets. And when this market turns, 
is a lot, I think it'd be a lot of fun again. But right now, spot price is low because utilities are not in the market. But utilities haven't been, always been the sharpest people in the world. Um, I'm sure you get offended by me saying that uh, when uranium was $15, $18 before, they don't want to do anything. It's going to stay low. That's all I've ever heard from them. Then they were contracting $100. So they don't want to do it, the 15 18 um, Part of it is I think the people who work there, the government employees, are not entrepreneurs like everybody here. You know, we see an opportunity, we jump in. They don't. Um, so as a result, I, I think the real opportunity for investors here is to be a contrarian. When it turns, it turns. A very senior person at Chemical asked me, what do you think? And I thought he should know more than I do. He said, when do you think uranium will turn? I said, could be 30 days, it could be 30 months. I don't know. But what I, what the problem with our industry is, um, is usually the supply side that screws up. Um, you know, like you get, uh, like for example, Scar Lake when it had a flood. So you had a little company like our Strathmore, which was a, a grandfather of fission uranium, two, two million dollar market cap to half a billion. No change in assets, perception. And that's the problem. Too many investors are like sheep. You know, instead, they should be like Warren Buffett says, when people are greedy in here, be scared. And when people are scared, be greedy. And right now, people are scared to be in uranium, and that's where they should be. Oh, it's very good. People are quite excited about gold, silver, lithium, and the other, some even from the base metals. So it's a much better mood. I think I got sold out first time I've seen. It's not a cheap conference, so I think it's a very good mood. Um, you know, and rightfully so, when you've got you know, negative interest rates around the world, where are people supposed to put their money? And then uh, Deutsche Bank just announced this morning the 98% drop in profit. The reality is the banking system is not together like people say it is, and we have faith in it. Um, so the problem um, is that you've got nowhere to put your money. So a lot of these fund managers going, where do we put our money? Well, they're going after putting money into things like gold. And some of the fund managers here, like Sprott, uh, people told me they're seeing money come from the weirdest horses they've never seen before in their business. People that were so conservative, but they got nowhere to put their money. So they're now trying to find places like gold.